couldn't see you in the dark there. <laughs> so I was just, I was up at the puppet store getting uh, tonight's hilarious puppet introduction. Hang on. <laughs> Pretend I wasn't here. <laughs> Imagine you're my first marriage. All right. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Gustave Flaubert. <laughs> and I have a contempt for the bourgeoisie. <laughs> However, I'm very excited about the tunnel between France <laughs> and England, which was built 15 years ago. <laughs> and I'm going to walk through it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I doing a callback to a joke that has not yet occurred in the show? <laughs> That's the thing about Flaubert, he was always messing with structure. <laughs> Actually, he wasn't. Flaubert, uh, of course, wasn't a pig. He was French, which is a com <laughs> completely different, completely different. Flaubert, although he did have sideburns like this. Do we have a picture of Flaubert? We used to. We used to have a picture of Flaubert. Do you have a line around? Well, do the Andy Warhol one then. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, all right. So, <laughs> you know, the thing about Andy Warhol is he kind of messed with structure too. <laughs> what Andy Warhol, and people say, uh, what Andy did like they knew him. I didn't know him, but I'm going to do that too. What Andy did <laughs> is he kind of, he kind of demystified in a way. He, he, he kind of deconstructed uh, pop art, I thought. <laughs> Know what you're thinking right now? You're thinking, you're thinking, darn, I wish the cable was working. <laughs> but I like, I, I rather admire people who deconstruct conventions and then turn them into something of their own, like Flaubert or Andy Warhol. <laughs> Actually, that's the only two people I like. <laughs> you might as well know. You heard me, my eight-year-old son. <laughs> but, Dad, don't you like me? No, nope, only Flaubert and Andy Warhol. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love my son more than anything else in the world, even more than Flaubert and Andy Warhol, <laughs> who, to be honest, I don't care about either one of them. <laughs> I'm going to get letters now. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> it's hard to stay up, it's been a long, long day And you've got the Sandman at the door But hang on, leave the TV on And let's do it anyway It's OK, you can always sleep through work tomorrow OK, hey, hey Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Hey, Sandy. Don't you die, darling? All oh, right. Oh, very nice. All right. Oh, very nice. 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 Please! All right, that's enough. All right, that's really... That's enough. That's enough. I know it's just... I, it's just starting to sound a, l a little bit phony. Just a little bit. <laughs> it's almost as if you were doing it just for free candy. <laughs> I've got new contact lenses, and every time I blink, I have an acid flashback. It's awesome. <laughs> It's true, I keep blinking, I'm going, whoa! <laughs> Wait a minute, you can only have an acid flashback if you ever took acid. <laughs> I have, I have, but not, not in the last 20 minutes. 
Better get through the monologue quickly. Whoa! It's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And... <laughs> The election result. The election results are in. Everyone's talk. I, every, I am. Everyone's talking about what happened in the state of Maine. I was like, what? Because <laughs> they voted for medical marijuana, but against gay marriage. <laughs> I think the voters of Maine were worried that guys would get so high <laughs> they would accidentally marry each other. We should, we should, we should get married. <laughs> I'm surprised Maine voted against gay marriage because Maine's been touching Canada's bottom for years. <laughs> In denial, Maine. <laughs> A debate between the former presidents George W. Bush and Bill Clinton has been cancelled. It's, it's too bad. The debate was going to be called Dumb and Hummer. There's your joke I told you, yeah, you're dead. There's your late night joke there, everybody. The, the, the band are gonna go That was a joke. <laughs> Do you know uh, Jeremy Piven? Uh, you know Jeremy Piven? He says that drinking soy milk made him grow man boobs. I'm like, I wish I'd known about that before I paid for these. <laughs> anyway, this... <laughs> That's right, I've got breasts. <laughs> I've got breasts and I'm high on acid. <laughs> Take that, Cable. Uh, anyway, this is a very exciting time for the nautical buffs. You know, the people that dream of a life at sea. That's what I dream of. That and an underpants pillow fight with Fabio. Because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, not in Maine. Uh, <laughs> and, well, well, we could do it, we just couldn't get married. A few days ago, what I'm talking about anyway, is a few days ago, the largest cruise ship ever built, ever set sail for the first time. If you're like me, now if you're like me, first of all, you see a doctor drink a lot of orange juice, but if you're like me, there was a tip in there, stoners. Orange juice? Every time. I'm too high! <laughs> Anyway, if you're like me, you, you've been breathlessly following this ship's voyage. What happened is she, 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 uh, the ship left Finland a few days ago, and uh, in a few days she'll arrive in uh, Miami. Do we have a map of the route the ship is taking? There you go, out of Finland there. <laughs> Where's the airplane out of Finland? Shatnerstan? Shatnerstan is the new name for Canada, everybody. Anyway, right now the ship is in the middle of the English Channel, which is the water between Britain and France. Now, when I was a kid, we had to take a hovercraft to get over the, the Channel to France. Hover, you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't take that anymore because they've got the Channel Tunnel, or the Channel, they call it. It took forever to build because uh, uh, the English people didn't want a tunnel between England and France. Because they, uh, this is, I'm not kidding, I remember this in the English newspapers, they were scared that the tunnel would be used by French rats. <laughs> and like, oh, God heavens, no, we don't, we don't want French rodents coming over here. <laughs> coming over all nibbling at things, bringing French rabies. <laughs> anyway, the tunnel's been finished for 15 years now, and yes, the French rats did go to England, but they tasted the English food and they scurried back <laughs> We're like, I can't, I don't know how these people can eat this crap. <laughs> yes, you're right, let's go back to France. <laughs> France, you sound like you're from Transylvania. Yes, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm a Romanian rat. I settled in France, I took a trip to England. <laughs> Ooh, acid's coming on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the giant cruise ship. It's called Oasis of the Seas. It's huge. It's huge, this thing. It's got a park on it. It's got golf courses. It's got a shopping mall. All the things you can do on land with the added excitement of possibly sinking. <laughs> 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 I was like, why the hell would 
you go? <laughs> anyway, the ship is... Uh, the, 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 they're saying the ship is five times bigger than, than, than the Titanic. So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure everything is fine. They would never hit an iceberg. The global warming, there's no icebergs left. <laughs> anyway, the company that made the ship said that it's environmentally friendly. It's a completely green vessel. That means it doesn't dump anything in the ocean. All the waste created on the ship gets reused. <laughs> uh, in other words, don't order the lemonade. Uh, <laughs> Or the chocolate pie. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's enough. All right, the joke. I know that was stupid. That was stupid. You're right. You're right. I went too far. That deserved a round of applause. Oh, you've gone too far. We are insulted. <laughs> now, the, if this giant uh, ship is successful, though, this will spark a revival of the Love Boat. Maybe the, t uh, this the best TV show ever made. <laughs> People make fun of the love boat, but I enjoyed it every week. A different guest, stars, some people you would never expect to see on a sitcom. Do you know who was a guest on the love boat? Andy Warhol. <laughs> That's true. He was on the love boat. He didn't, he didn't say much. He just kind of went, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. He went, eh, <laughs> eh. Yeah. Andy Warhol was very different from Salvador Dali, of course, another famous artist who went, ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> now, when Salvador Dali and Andy Warhol got together, they talked about it all the time. There's lots of... Ooh, eh, ooh, ooh, eh, eh. Eh. All right. <sighs> I think the acid's wearing off now. <laughs> Going to find the shortest acid trip in history. <laughs> you know why? Vitamin C. We've reached that time again, haven't we? It's uh, time for the commercials, where I do my big finish at the end of the monologue. <laughs> Craig, are you reintroducing the awkward pause to television? <laughs> yes. Featuring Tim Gunn. Tim Gunn. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Gunn. Tonight I'll be answering a letter someone wrote to Aquaman. <laughs> Good boy. That's it. Stay. Roll over. Oh, just go. <laughs> Dear Aquaman, how come your hair never looks wet? My hair. Oh, you mean Aquaman's hair? It's because I wear a waterproof wig. But I think he stole it from Ellen DeGeneres. Please give your advice to me, Aquaman. Featuring Tim Gunn. Tim tonight. No, I'm going to try and keep it a surprise. Who? My tie's long tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Look at that. Oh! <laughs> when it's this long, it tickles me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> when I go home, I just wear this tie and nothing else. <laughs> Hi, honey, I'm home! <laughs> Right, I'm going to try and keep it a surprise for as long as possible who my next guest is, right? My first guest tonight. Um, she is the host of the Monique Show. <laughs> <laughs> which is on uh, BET. She's got a new film out called Precious, which is in theatres on Friday. Uh, the, the buzz on this film is incredible, isn't it? People are like, this is the greatest... <laughs> Please welcome Monique, everybody, Monique! <laughs> You 
look sensational. Can I say that? Thank you, you look baby. Fantastic. Just you can say anything you want to say to me. Really? Mm hmm. You see, you always say that when you're here, and then, and then I kind of I back down at the last minute. I get kind of scared because I think you, I think you're quite sexy. Do you? I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I think, think you're quite sexy too, Craig. Ow! You shut it off. <laughs> see? You shut off the dog. become sexier when you have that well I've heard women say that but that's not really true is it, it really is well, how because come? I don't know what that is I like I'll show guys I'm like no baby they be like oh it looks even better now I because I think it's commitment like the women know if you have on a wedding ring yeah. there has to be no commitment it's probably Monday night Tuesday morning you leave no big deal because they see that you have a ring I think that's why it's more sexier <laughs> that's great. <laughs> hey, can I can I talk to you about this this movie? Everyone's saying that you're going to get an Oscar for this movie. It's like people are talking like it's an, like it's amazing. I I haven't seen it yet. You know, <laughs> I love him because he's so damn honest. Um, the movie is absolutely amazing. But the credit really goes to the director, Mr. Lee Daniels, right. who had the vision and who was fearless, who didn't mind jumping over the edge. Because oftentimes in Hollywood, it's the sweet ending. Yeah. Well, with this movie, and people keep saying, well, it's a dark movie. It's not dark. It's just honest. All right. And it's honesty in your face, and it's mental illness in your face in a way you've never seen it before. Oh, right. Because oftentimes Hollywood shows mental illness in a hospital and right. a straitjacket. But this mental illness is your neighbor. Right. This mental illness may be you. Oh, dear, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, I think this is fine. I, uh, what happened afterwards, that Oprah called you after yes. the, she saw the movie and she became a producer after she saw the movie? Yes, That's yes. It. After she saw the film, about maybe 9.30 at night, right. I get a phone call, okay? Right. And let me just tell you the power of Oprah Winfrey, okay? <laughs> the power of this woman. So I get a phone call, Craig. Right. Now, I get a call before that call to let me know that I'm going to get that call, okay? Right. So you got to get a call. Oprah's going to be calling you? You got to get a call before the call. Yeah, yeah. So I get the call, right. okay? And I'm like, I'm trying to be cool, okay, when I answer the phone, because I know it's Oprah. Yeah. So I'm going to answer like, okay, it's just Oprah, right? Yeah. So I go, hello? And she says, hey, girl. What you wearing to the Oscars? Oh, nice. Now, I am yeah. tickled as hell, okay? Yeah, yeah. So after we get finished talking, we hang up. Now, I'm going to lock in the number to let people know. Yeah, I of got course. Oprah's telephone number, baby, okay? Because I'm going to call her back when I want to talk about something. When I go to lock in the number, yeah. this is how powerful this woman is. When I go to lock in the number, it's gone. It is as if she never... I go back to call history. I call Sprint and said, listen, I just got a phone call from Oprah Winfrey. Can you pull that number back up? No record of it, baby, as if it never happened. So people could believe I'm lying. I swear for God, Oprah Winfrey called me sugar. Are you sure she called you? No, I... I like, where's my camera? Because I'm going to no, talk no, right no. to Oprah. Where's my Oprah, camera, Craig? Oprah does... All right, Oprah watches this show. Yeah, off you go. Hey, oh. You doing sugar? Let Hi, Oprah. Know. You can call me anytime. Hey. Shut up. Hi, <laughs> Oprah. I think you're great. I love you, Oprah. I have a book out. <laughs> <laughs> You've got into late night talk shows as well, is that right? You got your yes, own show? Yes, Craig. I have my own late night talk show. Yeah. Did you hear my accent? Yeah, it was kind of Scottish there. It was yeah, yes, yeah, you're I rubbing love. off on me, sugar. You I've got can, my own I'll, late night I'll, talk show. I will rub, but never mind. <laughs> You're, you, I think you've just got a very dirty mind, Monique. That's what it is. You know what? Yes. I do. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. And I so appreciate it because it makes life fun. Yes. You know, people that have very clean minds yes. live very boring lives. Yeah. But right now, we're looking at each other in each other's oh, eyes. Stop yeah. It. <laughs> uh, you know exactly yeah. what you're doing. Knock it off. I won't. I yeah, know. It won't be fun, but I gotta tell you, with the late night talk show. Right, do you do a monologue in the band and all that? We, we have a, Like a proper one? Monologue, we have a band, yeah. we have a DJ, J uh, Big Jim's Penthouse Players, DJ Aunt Love, uh, Rodney Perry is the co-host, yeah. myself. You have a co-host? Co yes, crap, what is happening? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so I gotta tell you. Yeah, can I be on it? Please, oh, I would right. love to have you on the couch. Yeah. Now, I am so excited. <laughs> Your minds are dirty, too! So, 
This, and, this is one of the ones the TiVo in my house won't tape for some mysterious <laughs> reason. And late night, it's a party. Yeah. And when I watch your show, yeah. it's a feel good. You feel good. You have a great time with you. So, yes, I do. I have such a good time with you, Craig. I got to tell you, baby. So when, I, when they gave me the late night talk show, and you know how the reveal opens and I come out the elevator doors? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm a screamer, okay? I'm really loud when I get excited. Now, I don't... <laughs> Oh, man. And then, yeah. No, hang on, hang on. I'm enjoying this. Oh, you just got give, it? Okay, give go me a minute. On. Give get me a minute. It. Get it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, all right, baby, all right, I got right, mine, right, too. Yeah, all right. Now, here's why I need your advice, so okay. you can help me out. All right. Now, when I come through the elevators, okay, yeah, yeah. it's like I'm really loud. It's like, yes, hey, I love you. And the people keep saying, Monique, why are you yelling <laughs> at us? But I'm having such a great time, and I'm yeah. so excited. What advice could you give to me when the elevator doors open and I see all the people and they're saying, Monique, Monique, yeah. and I'm just like, let me come give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> do what you do with me. Make them work for it a little bit. <laughs> don't, just, don't just go ahead and give it to them. Yes. Make them work for it a little so I gotta, bit. Thank you, baby. You make them kind of like, uh-uh, you got to take me to dinner a little bit first. You, gotta, you know... Yeah, you know, but sometimes, you know, liberated women, mm -hmm. we don't necessarily need dinner, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I did, I, did, I, I, did, I, I did get married, yeah, yeah, I did. Congratulations, well, you, you're baby. married, too. Yes, yeah. and very happy. So, that, so, it, it, so it's only, like, Monday night to Tuesday morning, then? <laughs> well, what's tonight? Uh, this is Wednesday. In your region. Uh, <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's a rerun, and then I got no idea. It could be Wednesday night to Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Daylight savings is it's dark. We could... No, all right. Uh. <laughs> That got real close there. Did you see that? I did like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like... But did you see how you sat back for me to do that? No, no, I just... No, you, you put you're, it right you're... in position, no, Craig. Was, Watch I'm, your I'm, damn I'm, self, Craig. No, I was right there. I didn't move. I didn't flinch. I was like a man of steel. I was like, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Knock it off. All right. I am so excited for you to get this Oscar. I can't Maybe. think of someone who is more deserving and who... Well, I can <laughs> no, I can't actually. I, you know what? You, you were, you've always been so kind and come on the show all the time, and you, and you work so hard, and you're so good at what you do, and I'm, and I'm so pleased for you about this. Thank you, brother. Congratulations, Thank really. You, baby. Monique, everybody, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show where we celebrate the awkward pause. <laughs> you want to leave your own bedroom, don't you? <laughs> My uh, next guest is a writer, an actor and a comedian. Uh, he's got a new book out. It's called Stephen Fry in America. So that's a clue to who he is. <laughs> Please welcome the very lovely and clever Stephen Fry, everybody. <laughs> Stephen Fry. My how lovely! Fellow. How lovely to see you again. We don't. We won't be needing this. Yeah. The, the, uh, it's lovely to see. I haven't seen you in such it's a long time. Lovely to be seen by you. Well, <laughs> look at this. Look at this whole Isn't a it? book with pictures. You've been so clever and, <laughs> and brainy your whole life writing books that had no pictures, and then suddenly it's all pictures. Finally, yes. It's nothing to do with the fact that it's for the American market that it has <laughs> pictures at all. No, I assure you. 
No, no, no. Yeah. I, you know, I'm speaking to an American. I am an American now. Yes, I'm an American citizen. Look, I've got my tattoo and everything. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm it. Would you ever think of that? Yes, I genuinely would. Really? I mean, I, the reason I did this is about a, a journey I made. For, did you go to every state in America? I went to every one of your 50 glorious states. From some of them, some sea of them are better than others. Yes, that yeah. is. <laughs> I, I didn't spend that long in Delaware, it must be said. Yeah. Um, <coughs> well, we sort of waved as we went through. Yeah, no, well, Delaware's where all the credit card letters come from. That's where they are. That's right. Yeah. Yes, and, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. DuPont have a big uh, factory there, I think. Yes, uh, they do. I don't know. It wasn't in the citizenship exam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So did you have to learn all the state capitals and, uh, uh, and the no, mottos? No, it, it, it was, they've changed the test. It was quite easy when I took the test. The uh, test, when I took it, it was, uh, do you like soda? Yes. <laughs> do you hate Al-Qaeda? Yes. <laughs> Come on in. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, welcome. That's Here's right. your gum. Yes. But, the, uh, <laughs> but now it's, it's uh, I think it's a bit harder now. Yeah. But I think you'll be fine. You're, I think, think you're clever. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an odd thing. When, when, um, when I was about 10, my mother told me that my father, who's a physicist, right. had been offered a job when she was pregnant with me in Princeton University. Right. And he very nearly took it. And she said it was really funny because if he had, of course, he would have been born in America. You would have been in America. I know. And the moment she told me that, I had this sort of image of a doppelganger um, <laughs> living in Princeton called Steve, who would, who would be physically the same as me, identical in every physical respect. Maybe, maybe a bit trimmer, maybe a bit fatter, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I just, for the, to this day, I don't know, how, I mean, would my attitude have been different? Would my sense of humour have been different? I, I, I don't know. Not in Princeton. That's, that's kind of pretty much England. I guess yeah. it is. Yeah. But, but the... I, <laughs> yeah, I look forward to your letters. Yes. And, and let me just tell you one thing. The spelling better be good. <laughs> now... But the, 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 didn't you, one of your books, wasn't that set in Princeton? Yes, it was, funny enough. Yes, yeah, was yeah. that because of that you did that? I suppose I've always had a bit of an obsession. And oddly enough, my, my great university friend, Hugh Laurie, plays a doctor in Princeton. That's right, yes. How weird is that? Yeah, it's kind of odd. It's I all... think, have you ever been to Princeton? I, I, feel, I made a film in Princeton. I did a movie called IQ. IQ with yeah. Tim Robbins and the, Meg Ryan. And, and Walter Matthau. Walter yes. Matthau, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good movie. It was, I played the usual English part of it. Yeah, yeah, emotionally. You were. <laughs> emotionally. You, you were the jerk. Yeah, the, a cripple. Um, don't come along, Buffy, <laughs> and all that. <laughs> The emotionally constipated nobody who gets yeah. axed by... But I tell you, there were... Um, <laughs> the, Tim, I, I, Tim Robbins' best friend was played by Tony Shalhoub, who then went on to be Mr to be, Monk. To Mr yeah. Monk, yeah. Then the, I did another movie with Tony Shalhoub in it, and also in it was James Gandolfini, who went on to be Mr Soprani. Uh, Mr Soprano. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mr. Sop <laughs> Mr Soprani is... Uh... OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's... That those tablets in the dressing room you leave for your guests. Acid. They, oh. Yeah. <laughs> acid. I here, wonder. Have some orange juice. I got yeah, some orange juice. Here. <coughs> oh. Yeah, you, you gotta take the vitamin C. Yes. It worked surprisingly tennis racket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, take, it takes time to, yeah. to take an effect. It does. Oh listen. The last time you were here, we had a we had a discussion, not an argument, a debate yeah. about flying. Because I was saying how terrified of flying I was, ah. and you were saying you were a pilot. Yes, I, I'm terrified of crashing, but not of well, flying. Yeah. <laughs> flying is fine. I'm also terrified of crashing. Yeah. But in the time since you, you it's been three years. Yeah. In that three years, I have since become a pilot, and oh. I, I have my pilot's license. Oh, congratulations! Yes, yes, what like do you fly? Uh, I fly a Cessna. Oh, brilliant! Yes, yeah, a Cessna. That's um. That's, that's just a little bit pathetic, though, because that's got a... <laughs> it's not a tail-dragger. It's not a tail-dragger, no, but it's... That's fun. It's got 240-horsepower engine oh, in it, this a, thing. No, it is. Yeah, it is. No, it is. You, you start this thing up, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the strange thing about flying, it's great to fly, and being up there is marvellous. I, in little old England, where I am, which is about the size of one of the three... You know, Delaware, the, I think. It's about yeah, exactly yeah. tiny. Um, <laughs> There's a part of England where I grew up, and I know almost every field and every church. The moment I flew, five seconds, you're lost. You yes, look down. Yes, it looks very different. Yeah, it's yeah. just extraordinary, isn't yeah, yeah. it? And those are the things you know. You have to learn how to read wind and how to how to look down uh, and look down sort of orient people. and look down on people. Yeah. You can learn That's that at Princeton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. No, no. Right. I've got a chip in my shoulder. I, I never had a proper education, and I feel that you know when I was about ten years old. You mentioned old, Flaubert. 
Flaubert, yeah. How many talk shows in America have people who mention Flaubert? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> you should be proud. Yes, yes, mentioning you know? Flaubert. Although, do, I must ask you, are you a fan of Flaubert? Uh, yes, I am. He was all right. He had a contempt for the bourgeoisie. <laughs> so you, so you, yeah. you, yeah, he did. And but he also, he, he, you said he, he kind of deconstructed structure. He did deconstruct he, a little bit, a tiny bit, yes, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, to have he, contempt for the bourgeoisie was a little bit, you know. But he was almost anal in the way he wrote. You know, he, he the mot juste, the, the exact word. He would sometimes spend a week on on a sentence, a single sentence, polishing. A it week up. in a single sentence. Yeah. I mean, he, see, I got no time sweat. for that. No. No. <laughs> I, I have nothing but contempt for Flaubert. <laughs> I used to enjoy him, although I do portray him as a polished Irene pig, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. How many... And you insulted English cuisine, which was very upsetting. Well, it's an easy laugh. You're Scottish. I In am. Scotland, it's even worse, yes, ladies it and gentlemen. Yeah, 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 it is. It is. No, they, there's no doubt. I they can't deep deny it. fry Mars bars. Yes, they do. They put them in hot oil and they fry them. Yeah. That's a fact, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's places in America where that's popular. Is it? Yeah. Many places that you go to Dollywood, Dolly Parton's place, you can get deep fried candy. That's good. That's I think good. so. I made that up. Yeah. But it's possible. <laughs> Do you ever just make stuff up and yeah. then say it's true and people believe you because you're brainy? <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but funnily enough, what, go, I, we didn't go to, to Dollywood. It's just in Tennessee, I think. Yeah, I think so. I yeah, did I have yeah. an experience in Tennessee that is one of the most shattering things that ever happened to me. Wow. So it's a marvellous place. Right. In the morning, I'd been in North Carolina in a balloon looking down on the Blue Ridge Mountains, and then we landed, and I thought, how beautiful it is, this part it's of the very world. very nice part We of drove the world. through to Knoxville, which is a nice town, and mm. there's a campus. And in the corner of the campus, there was a, a lady waiting... For, for me and the camera crew, we were filming there. And I hadn't been told exactly what we were going to see, but that I should be ready for something slightly weird. And we... Um, I was ready for something weird because I was in America. So yes. I... Um, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. Yes. And there was a padlocked pair of gates and razor wire above. She said, come in. She opened, unpadlocked the gate. In we went, crew and everything. She padlocked it again. We were in a sort of garden. She said, put on these little paper shoes, these little booty things. Like they wear in the CSIs. Those kind yeah, of right. things, exactly. <laughs> and some rubber gloves. Like they wear in the clubs. Like they wear <laughs> in, in the clubs that you and I usually go to. And then... Around me, this is going to get creepy, so <laughs> the laughter better start getting nervous, because yeah. it's really weird. It's all nervous yeah. all the time. Yes. <laughs> I noticed kind of little white things and flashes of black and whatever, and I was in a place known as the Body Farm, and it was filled with cadavers, with dead bodies in various states of decomposition, of suppurating, rotting decomposition, and in various places, some were left open, some, there was a car somewhere in the trunk of the car. Some there's a little a little cabin. You sure this is not surface. Detroit we're talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> the whole the whole purpose of the place was the Department of Forensic Anthropology, and it was the first of its kind in the world. Good lord! And you know, you remember that uh, William Peterson character, Gruesome Grissom, as he was known on CSI, yes, who, yes. who had this thing about the bugs that w you could tell time of death from the bugs that were hatched inside a dead body. That's where they discovered this, and I saw bodies with these maggots and things crawling. I saw things I would never hope ever to see again, and smelt. It was as if Satan found his way up my nostrils <laughs> and tried. <laughs> to claw out everything that was decent in me. It's... You see, they, because they have to have... Thank you. <laughs> mm, that's good. <laughs> they have... They had a body... They had a body crammed into a... Sort of like a mailbox. And it was just a, a brown soup with bones sticking out. And a smell that I, I will never forget. And... It, yeah, it's creepy and it's grim, but the wonderful woman taking me around, professor in this department, she, you know, she, she's going to leave her body to have that done to it. And it does, it, it resolves murder cases. It, 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 some people are found not guilty of murder, some people are found guilty of murder as a result of this extraordinary thing. But, I, I, you know, there's a phrase which you must have come across as an American and before, which is, only in America. Yeah. <laughs> now, and when you hear that phrase, only in America, it means something extraordinary, something extreme. Usually something good, Something actually. good. Yeah, yeah. But you know well enough that if someone was to say, only in Britain, yeah, yeah, it yeah. would be something damp, yeah, miserable, yeah, yeah. chewy, 
No, yeah, yeah. not till Wednesday, yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah. unlikely. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's only just, in Britain. Yeah, I, yeah. Only in Britain. I but have a theory, this, by yeah, the way. I have yeah. a theory about about sure. uh, about Britain. Though, that I think that the, the people of Britain think that we Americans, which I am now, mm. <laughs> they think that we Americans are a lot weirder than we actually are. Yeah. I think we're not. America's not that weird. No, and I think it's the fault. Actually, I'm one of the reasons I did this program is I was slightly fed up of a lot of British journalists going over to America, finding the weirdest people they could. Yes. Um, well, I'm so glad you went to the body farm well, in no. Tennessee. <laughs> That'll set them right. Yeah. That was a, somehow an ennobling thing. It was good science, you know, but, but they, what, it, what I didn't go and do was look up sort of mad Aryan warriors or militia people or strange religious fringe people who thought that God hated everybody. And, yes. You know, this... Because that's easy to do, and then you film them. <laughs> very, and, very easy. And, well, to yeah. do, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then we British hug ourselves and say, "Aren't we normal and aren't Americans weird?" But actually, my experience of America is I don't know that I I've ever visited a country where there are a higher proportion of genuinely hospitable, kindly, well-disposed people. It's absolutely true. I'd rather you know run out of gas in a small town in America than in Europe and and, and knock on a strange door. You would get. People and they walk there. They, there's my daughter. Help yourself. And they, you know, there's. A, <laughs> <laughs> they're just. I mean, that's. <laughs> that's <laughs> I, why did I say that? I don't know. I'm, I'm not you even, of all people. I'm not even I don't straight. understand it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. They, they would have spotted that. Yes. They would have seen he's gay. He's English. It's fine. There's right. my daughter. <laughs> Tell your daughter, please help her with her, <laughs> her embroidery. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, we're so, completely out of time, Stephen. It was oh, just, it's a great shame. It's been well, you enjoyable. know, one of the things about acid is, you know, time goes all over the place. Absolutely. Yeah. It's lovely. Now, please, what let's not make it three years until no. the next time. Because I don't want to get any more tattoos or more flying lessons. I'd like to just. <laughs> Carry on normally. It's It'll lovely to see you. Good luck with this. I, I, I am a great <laughs> fan of, of your work, and I'm looking forward to both uh, reading this and seeing the show. Will it be on BBC America? Uh, it's, it's on PBS, actually. Oh, really? Yes, it is, on various PBS stations throughout the nation. Oh, that's very classy. Yes, we'd like yeah. to think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stephen Fry, everybody. Yeah. We're right Look, uh, some of the stuff that we learned on the show tonight was true and some of it was false. <laughs> now, the true stuff is orange juice, when, you know, things are getting out of hand. That's, that's true. But I'm afraid Stephen Fry was right. Flaubert was not a deconstructionist. Why couldn't I have said that on the night Paris Hilton was on? She would never have busted me on that. <laughs> However, to be fair, to mention that Flaubert was a deconstructionist causes debate. <laughs> debate is the structure on which America is built. Therefore, to mention something that you know is untrue in order to stimulate conversation is an act of patriotism. <laughs> so, I may have been wrong, but God bless America, everyone! Yeah.